Hey YouTube, hope you had a good week out there. Man, it's been just awful cool and wet here. The mud's finally starting to dry out. Praise the most high. Sunshiny day. But I understand this may be short-lived. I don't know. But uh, to the subject at hand is uh, Parasha Vaikhel. However you want to pronounce that. It's Exodus 35, 1 through 38, 20. As an overview, we have the regulations for the Sabbath. Uh, we have the collection of building materials for the Mishkan. We have the making of the tabernacle. We have the making of the uh, Ark of Elohim, the showbread temple, <laughs> the showbread table, the menorah, the incense altar, and uh, making the altar that we put the, for burning sacrifices, and the basin, and finally making the enclosure, the uh, enclosure that encompassed the Mishkan and the immediate area around it. But today, I would like to talk about the Sabbath, and then I'll bring it back around to this uh, Parsha. Seems like a lot of people are confused about the Sabbath, in my opinion. Um, the Sabbath is what is is what in the English language is known as Saturday. We know this based on three empirical facts. Uh, Israel has been keeping the Sabbath since at least the days of Moshe. Did the entire nation fall asleep a few days and get confused? That's number one. So there's three things. That's number one. Number two. The word for Saturday in Russian, excuse me, yes, the, the word for Saturday in, in Russia is Suboto. The word for Saturday in Spanish is Sabato. The word for Saturday in Romanian is Sambata. In fact, according to Yahweh's Restoration Ministry, the word for Saturday is some form of the word Sabbath in over a hundred different languages. Are all these people confused? Finally, look up Sabbath in the dictionary. I mean, that's, that's enough for me to, to clench it. So, we, now we know when the Sabbath is, why should we keep the Sabbath? Well, I'd like to read Exodus 31.16. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. You know what perpetual means? It means without ceasing. Um, it never stopped. Never in, in Scripture will you see the, uh, the Sabbath is now the first day. Now, the apostles may have been meeting on the first day, but they would have never thought about replacing the Sabbath. And I suggest you don't either. Of course, if you're watching this, you're keeping the Sabbath. So. Um, Isaiah 58, 13 and 14. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my set-apart day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the set-apart of Yahweh, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in Yahweh, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Yaakov thy father, for the mouth of Yahweh hath spoken it. And uh, that sounds pretty good to me. I could use, I mean, I'm riding pretty high here, but uh, this, this sounds better. Isaiah 56, 6 through 8. Also, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to Yahweh, to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh, to be his servants, O oh, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy, holy mountain, making them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Adonai, which gathereth the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. 
So, um, it's this, these three verses started off with, also to the sons of the stranger. Well, we know from Exodus 12, 49, that there's one law, and it's for the stranger, and it's for the Hebrews. So, uh, man, this is, uh, this sounds good to me. And I, and whether I'm Ephraim in dispersion, or whether I'm grafted in, you know, it's good enough for me. So back to the Parsha, okay? Let me read Exodus 35, 1 through 3. And Moshe gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together, and said unto them, These are the words which Yahweh hath commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to Yahweh. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So, it says here, uh, um, it says, six days shall work be done, but on the seventh shall be to you a holy day, and no work is done. So, uh, you know, you, you'll have to look up work and define that for yourself. I pretty much think that's related to vocation. But, you know, the third verse is pretty succinct. You shall kindle no fire. So, uh, probably better to err on the side of uh, timidity and, um, and being afraid to transgress this commandment. So, why is this here? I mean, we're talking about building the Mishkan and all this. Well... I believe it was inserted to tell the Hebrews and the strangers with them that even though they had the most important thing to do, which is building the Mishkan for the creator of the earth, that they were to cease operations on the Sabbath and praise him. And, you know, and like that verse said, does not turn their foot aside from Yahweh. So my conclusion is <laughs> keep the Sabbath, <laughs> always. And you know, it seems like certain things like ham radio, things I've been wanting to do, like a ham radio test or certain shooting classes, they're always on the Sabbath. But uh, I figure if Yahweh wants me to to participate in those or, or to get that certification or knowledge or whatever, he'll provide an opportunity for me. But uh, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Keep the Sabbath. We'll see you next week.